the new year brought heartache to one Oroville, California family. A young woman was just starting her adult life when she disappeared. After a long search, her family finally knows where Tatiana Duggar ended up, but police are still left with more questions than answers. What is up, Ewu crew? Today, we will be looking for clues in the events that led to the end of a missing persons case involving the 19-year-old California woman. Her body was recently discovered on March 28, 2021, and DNA testing confirmed that the remains belonged to Tatiana Duggar, who disappeared a few months prior. Limited information has been released on what may have led to her death, as this case is still ongoing. Let's get into it. Tatiana Sunshine Duggar lived up to her name. According to her friends and family, the charismatic teen grew up in a tight-knit family in Oroville, California, a quiet place in Butte County, north of Sacramento. A recent graduate of the Las Plumas High School, she was ready to leave the small town, and in the fall of 2020, she relocated to Los Angeles, moving in with roommates. Undoubtedly, Tatiana's family members were happy to see her return to Oroville when she visited home for the Christmas holiday. New Year's Eve was just around the corner, and one night, Tatiana left with a man the family didn't know. Together, they drove to Oakland. Unfortunately, Tatiana would never return home to her family again. According to Tatiana's sister, Deneen Duggar, the man may have been someone associated with Tatiana's new roommates down in Los Angeles, but little is known about him other than he goes by the name Marcos. Tatiana's sister, Savannah, said about Marcos, we never knew him. We never knew him as a boyfriend or nothing like that, but you know, we aren't sure. She could have just not told us that. The two of them booked a room at the Westwind Lodge in East Oakland and remained at the hotel for over a week. It's unclear why they stayed there for so long. This part of Oakland is not known for its tourism infrastructure. On January 7th, Tatiana called her mother and the two of them spoke for about an hour. Her mother said that nothing about the call seemed out of the ordinary and everything seemed fine. As a daughter, sister, and aunt, Tatiana was in daily contact with her family, talking to them through phone calls or on one of her many social media accounts. On January 9th, none of her family had heard from her, and she hadn't been active on social media. Her uncharacteristic lack of communication instantly drew concern. In an interview, Tatiana's sister, Deneen, stated that on the night of January 8th, Tatiana and Marcos had attended a party. According to Deneen, Marcos apparently had left her at the party by herself, and Tatiana would never make it back to the hotel that night. Supposedly, Marcos returned to the party to get her, but Tatiana was already gone. The last contact made from Tatiana's cell phone occurred at approximately 3 a.m. when she sent an unassuming Snapchat to Deneen. That final cell phone activity pinged to a rundown park that wasn't anywhere near the hotel she was staying in. After not being able to reach Tatiana throughout the remainder of the next day, Deneen filed a missing persons report with the Oakland Police Department. The police conducted a wellness check on the hotel room that Tatiana was staying in. They discovered no sign of foul play or potential kidnapping. All her belongings were still in the room and her car remained locked in the parking lot. But Tatiana's cell phone went straight to voicemail. Tatiana's family led the charge in the search for the missing 19-year-old. They organized gatherings and sold face masks and cookies to raise money for a reward fund offered for information on her disappearance. A GoFundMe page went on to raise enough money to pay for a private detective to launch their own investigation into the case. Online, many people speculated that she could have fallen victim to human trafficking, 
In the United States, California leads with the highest number of human trafficking cases, Oakland being a hotbed for such abductions. But with no tips and even less evidence to go off of, it couldn't be confirmed if this was the case for Tatiana's initial disappearance. For weeks, the family was left desperately wandering without any answers. A cousin remarking, just not knowing where she's at, if she's okay, is the hardest part. If she's cold, if she's lonely, if she's still alive, we don't know. We have no answers. I just want her to know that we are never going to give up. We're never going to give up looking for her. However, on March 28th, the search would come to a tragic end when a hiker reported finding a body in the woods just off the side of US Route 97 in Siskiyou County, eight miles northeast of the city of Weed. After recovering the remains, medical examiners administered a rapid DNA test, which confirmed that the body is, in fact, Tatiana Duggar. The Siskiyou County Sheriff released a statement saying that the remains appeared to have been there for an extended period of time. How Tatiana ended up over 250 miles away from where she was last seen is a mystery. Authorities haven't commented on whether or not anyone has been arrested for Tatiana's death or disappearance, as the investigation is ongoing. Sadly, Tatiana's GoFundMe page went from providing resources for her recovery to allocating funds for her untimely funeral. Her sister posted on social media, our hearts will forever be broken by this news. Please continue to keep our family in your prayers. Somewhere out there, someone knows something about who is responsible for the disappearance and death of this young woman. As her family had the sunshine eclipsed from their lives, justice still needs to be served for Tatiana. Have you heard anything about Tatiana or this case? Authorities ask that if you have any information regarding the death or disappearance of Tatiana Sunshine Duggar, please contact Butte County Detectives at 530-538-7671 or the Siskiyou County Authorities at 530-841-2900.